This presentation is about the book entitled Lakatouche Philosophy of Mathematics, authored by Koicher in 1991. Hi, this is Alan J.S. Kahandi. In November of 1956, at the age of 31, Imer Lakatouche left Hungary, going first to Vienna and then to King's College, Cambridge, as a PhD student. For his thesis, he chose the topic of mathematical discovery. He based his research on an historical case study and completed in 1959. Lakatouche was not interested in the sorts of problems in the philosophy of mathematics. Rather, his concern was with the growth of mathematical knowledge. He rejects the idea of foundations for mathematical knowledge and holds that it is just a fallible as our knowledge of the external world. The Methodology of Scientific Research Programs or MSRP, a philosophical paper of Imer Lakatouche. The MSRP is usually and rightly considered as Lakatouche rationalist answer to Kuhn's views on the development of science. Here, we are going to see the contradicting views of Kuhn and Lakatos. Kuhn, in 1962, said, Science is best understood in terms of large-scale paradigms relatively resistant to falsification but are kept or discarded according to power struggle. While Lakatos, in 1970, counters that large-scale relatively unfalsifiable research programs are important in characterizing science. Mathematics as Quasi-Empirical Science There are remarks made by Lakatouche at the Colloquium in the Philosophy of Science in London in 1965. These remarks were in the form of a reply to Professor Kalmar's paper. According to Kalmar, intuitive evidence is ultimately a product of practical testing and experience. Lakatouche very much agreed and he expanded his original remarks into a longer paper and were published in Lakatouche edition entitled A Renaissance of Empiricism in the Recent Philosophy of Mathematics in 1967, now called on to be a renaissance, was at the time withheld from publication by Lakatouche and only published posthumously. Here, we're going to have the differentiation of quasi-empirical theories and Euclidean theories, methodology of scientific research programs or MSRP, and the application of MSRP to mathematics. In reply to Kalmar, Lakatouche distinguished two types of theories, the Euclidean theories and quasi-empirical theories. Perhaps the best way to characterize quasi-empirical as opposed to Euclidean theories are the following. For Euclidean theories, Lakatouche 1967 said, In case of Euclidean ideal, the basic methodological rule is to search for self-evident or at least plausible actions. While for quasi-empirical theories, Lakatouche 1967 said, that to search for bold imaginative hypotheses with high explanatory and juristic power. Indeed, it advocates an inhibitedly speculative proliferation of alternative hypotheses to be pruned by severe criticism. For Euclidean theorists, the main pattern of Euclidean criticism is suspicion. Do the proofs really prove? Are the methods used too strong and therefore fallible? While for the quasi-empirical theories, the main pattern of quasi-empirical criticism is proliferation of theories and refutation. According to Lakatouche, mathematics is quasi-empirical. Understandably, because he wants to show that mathematics is a quasi-empirical science. Lakatouche then concentrates on the problem of the flow of falsity in mathematics theories from the bottom to the top. In other words, on the problem of the potential falsifiers. The nature or basic statement 
or potential falsifiers of quasi-empirical theory is decided by the nature of the truth value injection into its potential falsifiers. For example, the statements of the form P and negate P. The potential falsifiers express hard facts defines the subject matter. Apart from potential falsifiers, Lakatouche discusses heuristic falsifiers. For example, if within a formalization of an informal theory, a theorem can be derived formally which contradicts a theorem from the informal theory, then this informal theorem falsifies the formal theory. If the informal proof can be formalized in the formal theory, then we have a logical falsification. If it cannot, we have a heuristic falsification. We are forced to choose either drop one of the axioms of the formal theory or drop one of the arguments in the informal proof. Now, the methodology of scientific research programs. The notion of research programs appears for the first time in Lakatouche's published work in which he completed the Renaissance in his changes in the problem of inductive logic. In that paper, Lakatouche discusses Carnap's research program, the Lakatouche term in epistemology. In his paper, Lakatouche 1968 wrote, a successful research program puzzles with activity. There are dozens of puzzles to be solved and technical questions to be answered, even if some of these inevitably are the program's own creation. The quotation shows how Lakatos became fascinated by the phenomenon of the self-propelling force, so-called positive heuristic, that carries scientists in a particular direction of the theories they develop. According to Lakatouche, great scientific achievements are not characterized by an isolated hypothesis, but rather by a research program manifests itself in the form of a series of successively developed scientific theories characterized by a certain continuity which connects the members of the series. The MSRP in Lakatouche's view is a sequence of theories developing from one original hardcore which contains methodological rules. Some of these rules tell us which research directions to avoid, negative heuristic, and the others tell us which research directions to take, the positive heuristic. To illustrate the MSRP, a figure will describe the concept made by Lakatouche in 1967. It has the following components. The hardcore. It consists of essential parts of the program, the central beliefs of the program. The core isn't subject to falsification. The protective belt. It consists of bridge concepts that connect the core to the world at large. It protects the hardcore from refutation. Changes should be made to the protective belt never to the hardcore. Positive heuristic is also called qualifiers. It's a rule listing chains of ever more complicated stimulating reality. It forbids the researcher to refute assumptions belonging to the hardcore of the research program. And the negative heuristics is also called counterexamples. It leads researchers towards construction of auxiliary hypotheses which are useful to eliminate the anomalies resulting from an application of the research program made in terms of prediction. In contrary to Kuhn, Lakatus research programs have achieved monopoly only rarely. The history of science is and should be the history of competing research programs. The sooner competition starts, the better. Now, the application of MSRP to mathematics. The concept of scientific research program was originally formulated within the context provided by Lakatos' work in the philosophy of science and its applicability to the philosophy of mathematics was been supported by some authors and challenged by others. 
Considering the Lakatosh MSRP definition, it is clear that its application to mathematics is not a trivial matter. The application of MSRP to mathematics would require the identification in mathematics of research programs by means of notions like hardcore, protective belt, and positive heuristic. It would also require that in mathematics must distinguish theoretical, heuristic, and empirical programs. And finally, it would require examples of competing research programs in mathematics. The Coitre's view on Lakatouche MSRP. The applicability of the concept of Lakatouchean MSRP to mathematics has been questioned in Coitre 1991. Coitre's scepticism about the relevance of the methodology of research program to mathematics depends on three main reasons. Number one. In mathematics, there is no major difference between, say, a general conjuncture and a very special case of it, comparable to the difference between Newton's simplest models of the solar system and the empirical facts. Number two, Lakatu's rational reconstruction on the basis of his MSRP, there are always rival research programs concerning a particular aspect of empirical reality. However, there seems to be considerable less competition in mathematics than in science, at least at first sight. And number three, in contrast with what happens in the empirical sciences, mathematical theories are weakly fallible in the sense that one can never exclude the occurrence of Now, let's have Cauchy and the continuum. Lakatouche in 1966, before he presented the concept of research program, delivered a paper at the International Logic Colloquium in Hanover called Cauchy and the Continuum, the significance of non-standard analysis for the history and the philosophy of mathematics. Lakatouche construed Cauchy's theorem on the continuity of the limit function of a convergent series of continuous function in accordance with the views of historiographers of mathematics. He concluded that there are two theories of the continuum in the history of calculus. There is in the history of the calculus a theory based on standard continuum. On the other hand, there is a theory based on richer continuum. Cauchy and the continuum had been accepted for publication, but Lakatouche withheld and it appeared only posthumously. Lakatouche concentrates on Cauchy's proof of the theorem in the course The Analyze, which states that on an interval, the limit function of a convergent series of continuous functions is continuous. Cauchy's sound theory of 1821 has been the subject of rival interpretation. Historians generally assume that Cauchy made the mistake of not distinguishing between convergence and the uniform convergence. Lakatouche in Cauchy and the Continuum had a different opinion. He writes, Cauchy made absolutely no mistake. He only proved a completely different theorem in 1821 about transfinite sequences of functions which Cauchy converge on the Leibniz continuum. It is an interesting fact that Cauchy in 1853 published a paper in which he returned to his 1821 mistake. The received view is that Cauchy corrected the mistake in that paper. He introduced uniform convergence. According to Lakatouche, Cauchy repeated the theorem in 1853 and showed that Ali counterexamples simply do not satisfy the conditions of the theorem. There is no convergence where it is necessary. 
In Lakatouche 1966 view, the fact that Trauche's work has been misunderstood is a result of the fact that in the course of 19th century, the rival theory, based upon a standard continuum without infinitely small and infinitely large elements, began to dominate. In this case, we are dealing with two opposing views. Cauchy investigated functions defined on a standard continuum and he considered infinitesimals only as a useful notion definable in terms of the standard continuum by means of variables converging to a limit. And Cauchy investigated functions defined on a non-standard continuum and he considered infinitesimals as mathematical entities of their own specific rank, which can be considered directly though it may sometimes be useful to think of them as represented by sequences. If one compares the standard and non-standard continuum of Cauchy's 1821 and 1853 versions of the theorem without adding other arguments, it is not absolutely clear which interpretation is to be preferred. It may prefer one of the two interpretations, but the other interpretation can only be rejected on the basis of further evidence. Koichir's Views on Cauchy's Mathematics Koichir, 1991, argued that standard interpretation of the text should be preferred to a non-standard interpretation because a non-standard interpretation produces more problems than it solves. A standard interpretation is simpler. And finally, to conclude this presentation, Cauchy and the continuum should be taken into consideration for the sake of completeness. Cauchy and the continuum illustrates problems that historians or philosophers are faced with when they attempt to reconstruct mathematical development. Mathematical Scientific Research Program, or MSRP, in the Lakatos work was a reaction to Kuhn's views of philosophy of natural science. And, if the reconstruction had been factually correct, the MSRP will have conclusions from it. And for my philosophy, rational reconstruction of mathematics is avoidance of bias continuum of the historical materials. Thus, bias interpretation is merely illustrate our subjective preference. Once again, this is Alan J. S. Kahandi. Shukran for listening.